Good morning, everyone. So for today, we will be discussing numerical methods for differentiation and integration. I have two methods in store for you today, one for each. So for integration, uh, we'll be discussing the Muller's method. And then for differentiation, we will be discussing forward difference. Okay, so a little overview for the Muller's method. It is a root finding algorithm. A numerical method for solving equations of the form f of x is equals to 0. It was first presented by David E. Muller, hence the name Muller's method. It was named after him in 1956. So this method is based from the second method, which we have previously discussed. And uh, it constructs every iteration aligned through two points on the graph of f. So that's for second. But for the Muller's method, it uses three points instead of two. And it constructs the parabola through these three points. It takes the intersection of the x-axis with the parabola to be the next approximation. So that's the main difference between Muller's method and second. So Muller's, use, uh, Muller's method uses three points instead of two. Uh, for the scope and limitations of this method, uh, I believe that, uh, not actually me, this is something that is uh, factual. So it, it's a bit tedious the, for Muller's method, uh, programming Muller's method rather. In C, it's a bit tedious that it requires three initial approximations. So just like what we have mentioned earlier, these uh, this requires three points so that's why we also need three initial approximations so that's one of its scope however the method converges quadratically for almost all the initial guesses overall this method is more effective for locating complex roots it can effectively generate complex roots of a function even though the initial approximations or guesses are real now, comparing it to other methods such as newton rapson uh, this one converges slower compared to that one, but faster than the second method. The convergence is linear, and the overall approach used in the method is quadratic interpolation of the first three guesses. Let's try to have an example for the Muller's method. So we're asked to find a root of an equation, f of x is equals to x cubed minus x minus 1. All right, so using Muller... Uh, of course, we'll be using Muller's method. So f of x is x cubed minus x minus 1. So just like how we solve for a parabola, we start at 0, 1, 2, and then we have our first three guesses or our initial guesses, x uh, sub 0 being 1, x sub 1 is 2, x sub 2 is 1.5. Okay. Now, uh, of course, we get the function of those three, as you can see here. And then we solve for h1 and h2. Formula for h1 is x sub 1 minus x sub o. All right. Then for h2, it's x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So please do take note of those uh, formulas. Okay. So next thing we do is we solve for, uh, I'd rather name this as s sub 1 or s1. Instead of sigma, it kind of looks like s, so, so we can say that it's s sub 1. So uh, we solve for s sub 1 using this formula, and it will be the same all throughout the method for each iteration. So s sub 1 is equals to fx, uh, f of x sub 1 minus f of x sub 0 over h1, which uh, all of these are obtained already, okay? Substituting the values, we get the 6 as our s sub 1. Then s sub 2 with this formula, f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 divided by h2. Kind of looks similar, but please take note that these variables are different. So again, substituting the values 0 0.875 minus 5 divided by negative 0 0.5, we arrive at a value of 8.25. Okay, now after computing for S, uh, S sub 1 and S sub 2, we compute for letters A, B, and C. 
For A, the iterative formula is S sub 2 minus S sub 1 over H sub 2 plus H sub 1. All of which we have already obtained. We have S2 being 8.25. S1 is 6. H2 is negative 0.5. H1 is 1. We get the value of 4.54 A. Then for uh, variable B, we use this formula. A times H2 plus D2. Okay, there should be a parenthesis here, but following the PEMDAS rule, uh, A should be multiplied to H2 first, and we all know that. So we get this value of 6 for B. Then lastly, for C, it's, uh, it's just equivalent to Fx, uh, F of X sub 2. So that's 0.875. Okay, and there's more after we get A, B, and C. So we solve now for X sub 3 or the new value for x sub 3. So x sub 3 is computed using this formula. Okay, again, it will be the same for all iterations. So x sub 3 is equals to x sub 2 plus negative 2c divided by p, uh, b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. Looks familiar because it, I, I believe it is derived from the quadratic equation. But uh, yes, this will be the formula for x3. So x3 is equals to x sub 2 plus uh, negative 2c um, divided by b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. Again, substituting our values, we arrive with a value of 1.33 for our x sub 3. Okay. And then the process goes on. The, the only difference is that now x sub o will now be, uh, sorry, x sub o is equals to x sub 1 and that will be 2. So that means that our initial x sub o, which is 1, will now uh, will no longer be considered. So our x sub, uh, x sub o will now be 2, then our x sub 1 is 1.5, and then our x sub 2 now will be the one that we've obtained earlier, which is 1.33. Okay, so following again the process, getting the function of each um, uh, of each x, and then getting h1 and h2, s1 and s2, as well as a, b, c. Okay, uh, let's proceed to getting uh, getting x sub three. So it's the same formula again that looks like the quadratic formula. Okay, so x sub 3 is equals to x sub 2 plus negative 2c divided by b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so um, but for now, again, uh, be mindful of the values that we are going to use. So for this one, uh, x, our x2 is now 1.33. Compared to previously, our x sub 2 was 1.5. Okay, so this time, um, we use x sub 2 is 1.33, substituting all other values. Our x sub 3 is 1.32447 or 1.32 if we're going to round it off to two decimal places. Okay, now what's going to happen next is that our x o will now be 1.5 and then our x1 is 1.33 and then our x2 is 1.3247. Okay. Then again, same process for the third iteration, getting the function, then our h1 and h2, s1 and s2, as well as a, b, and c. Um, lastly, computing for x sub 3, we get the value of 1.32. So as early as now, we can see that it's already converging. Okay, so our... Uh, previous value of x sub 3 is 1.32447. Uh, our value now is 1.32472. And as we go along, as we get more iterations, uh, it will definitely converge. But uh, as early as now, we can already see that our x sub 3 is converging. Okay, So that is actually our final answer. So that is the root Ayan, of the equation x cubed minus x minus 1. Alright, so now uh, we go to the main event wherein we try to solve uh, a problem uh, using Muller's method, but this time using a 
uh, a program, a programming language. So for me, I use the C program, okay, and the software that I will be using will be Dev C++. Okay, and for Muller, I will be using this code. There you go. Okay, and then um, first thing that we need to do is, of course, change our equation depending on what is given or what is required. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Let's change the equation first. So our equation, let's try a problem. So, um, find a root between 0 and 1 of the same transcendental function as before. Given f of x is equals to 3x plus sine x minus e raised to x. Okay. Let's try. So, let's try to uh, change our equation right here. So, the given is... Uh, 3x plus sine x. Okay. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> it's already 3x plus sine x minus e raised to x. Uh, e raised to x will be indicated like this. Uh, almost similar to Excel if uh, you're inputting e raised to x to Excel. So I've already changed that right here. So no uh, no need to change. The next thing that we need to do, um, we run our program. We compile and run. And let's test this one out. All right. So first up, uh, we are asked for the three initial guesses. So from our question earlier, it's... Uh, zero uh, between zero and one, so that makes our first three initial guesses zero, zero point five and one. All right. Uh, allowed error and maximum iterations. So the good thing about this one uh, is that we can minimize the error. So let's put point zero zero five. Then our maximum iterations is twenty. It will not. Um, get the 20th iteration it's just that this is the maximum okay now there you go as easy as that as soon as you enter okay the initial guesses and then your allowed error and maximum iterations we get the required root or the root of the function uh, 3x plus sine x minus e raised to x which is point uh, 0 0.3604. So as you can see, after just after three iterations, it already converged, getting this value. So let's check if it's equivalent to what was in the problem. Okay. As you can see, if you can uh, see the screen, it's showing here that the root is 0 0.360465. Same to our value. And that's it. It's as easy as that. Uh, no wonder... Um, programs are now being used for numerical methods. It saves you from the difficulty of solving all these equations the long way or the long method. Instead, you can just program a code and then get the value immediately. You know, the, the wonders of the computers. <laughs> okay, so now that we're good with that, okay, that's our output, obviously. We've already executed our program. So now we proceed to forward difference, which is a method of differentiation. It is um, used to find the first derivative of a function. Okay. Uh, we'll be using the same programming language, which is uh, C, and the same software, of course. Okay. Um, let's try to look at an example for forward difference. Yeah. So find the solution using Newton's forward difference formula. The only difference, though, or the the only limitation that I see with my pro, uh, with the program that I'm going to use for forward difference, is that I'm not allowed to input my equation or my function to the program, but instead I need to find the functions first, substituting the value of x to the equation. And then I, I create this table. So that's what we are going to input later onto our program, a table. 
like this. Okay. Okay, and that's one of the limitations that I see with the program that we are going to use. Um, instead of us inputting the equation f of x, um, we are uh, required to put, uh, input a table or the values of x and f of x. Alright, so if only we can input the equation instead, uh, even uh, either way though, we are able to arrive with the same answer or we are able to obtain what we are required to get. So let's try to solve this one. So our program will also generate what we call a forward difference table. So it's like this. So we have delta y and then delta squared y, then delta cube y. This is depending on the number uh, or the value of the value, depending on the values, of course. So we have, if the more values that we have, then of course, the larger table we're going to get. Okay, so after that, we get the values of h and p. For h, the formula is x sub 1 minus x sub o. And then p is equals to x minus x sub o over h. Substituting our values, we arrive at these answers. And then our iterative formula for forward difference is this one. So y of x is equals to y sub o plus p delta y sub o. So p is negative 1. Delta y sub o from our table is what? Negative 1. So it's this one. Okay, plus p times p minus 1 divided by 2 factorial. 2 factorial is just 2. Then uh, multiplied by delta squared y o. Delta squared y o. So that is 2. Okay, plus p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 divided by 3 factorial multiplied by delta cube y o, which is 6. So again, the more values that you have on your table, uh, that makes it longer for the formula as well. Okay. So solving the equation, substituting all values, we arrive uh, the value of y of negative 1 is equals to negative 2. Or f of negative 1 is negative 2. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try this one out on our program. So I've used this one. Okay, same language, uh, like what I said earlier, same software. So let's go ahead and compile and run. All right, so first thing that we need to do is we need to input the number of data. So let's try this example. So find a solution using new forward difference formula. So we have our values. Okay, so uh, the number of data is obviously 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's put 5 right here. Enter. So next, x sub 1. x sub 1 is 1,891. Y sub 1 is f of x, which is 46. Then x sub 2 is 1901. Y2 is 66. 1911 for x sub 3. Then 81. 1921. 93. Lastly, for the fifth value, 1931 equals uh, y5 is 101. All right, and with that, we have generated our difference, our forward difference table. It should look like this uh, if we want to write it the right way, but uh, on our program, it's displayed like this. So uh, that's another thing that we can actually work on or another limitation. If only it looks like this, it would be, you know, more uh, presentable. Where you, you'd be able to visualize what the forward difference table really looks like. But either way, again, our delta raised to the 4y is negative 3. Okay? Just like what I've mentioned, since this one has 5 values, this one has, uh, has 4. Just like our example, our forward difference table is bigger or it has more values. And then, of course, the formula will be or the equation will be longer as well so the value of x that we are required to get is 1895 so let's put that right here enter so the value of function at x is equals to 1895 is 54.85 from our example we have arrived with the same answer 54.85 there you go so we have successfully obtained 
the value of y of 1895 or f of 1895 using this program we've also we were also able to generate the forward difference table and uh, that's it for our lecture for today for discussing Muller's and forward difference we will be discussing more moving forward uh, the other methods of course and i hope to see you all on the next goodbye thank you